Hey, Pretty Girl Club. Welcome back to my story time series. Um, for those of you who have been emailing me your story times, I am backed up on my email right now because the content demand for this channel is so high now, which is amazing. Um, I've got lots more videos coming soon, but I wanted to tell my social climbing story and how some jealous ass bitches kicked me out of a Facebook group. Um, for those of you who listen to my story times, you might think, oh my God, you're so much drama at Zodicals United. Like, why are you always getting kicked out of stuff? I don't know. Well, actually, I haven't been kicked out of that many things. I've only been kicked out of a few things. And like, usually it has something to do with a man. And this story is no different. So I had just moved to a new city and I didn't have any friends here in the city that I live in right now. And so I was looking to make friends and socialize in more of a wealthy setting. Um, so I was looking to meet leveled up friends and also I was looking to socialize and just, you know, kind of have fun or whatever. I was single, so I was just like, whatever. So I found out about this social group in my city and I looked on their website and the social club was actually started by people who are unambiguous, except when I looked at the pictures, um, it looked really diverse. Like everybody was a part of it. So I was like, oh wow, this looks really cool. Um, so I was excited. I was like, I'm going to meet some friends that are going to be just like me and I'm going to just like have fun. Um, so this social group, they had a meetup. And so I thought you had to pay to like join this group. So I sent a message through the website and I was like, Hey, do I have to pay to like become a member of this uh, social club thing? Or how does it work? And then the person on the website was like, Oh no, actually this is free. This is a nonprofit. And so you can just show up. And then the person on the website, they gave me a link to this private Facebook group. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. Like, I don't have to pay, that's great. So I joined the Facebook group and I saw that there were hundreds of people in this Facebook group. First of all, I don't even use Facebook, so that's number one, but I had just moved here, so I was looking to make friends and stuff. So I joined the Facebook group. There were hundreds of people in here, girls and guys, and I noticed that the Facebook group was majority black. Um, when I say black, I mean they were majority unambiguously black. There were some MLS people in the group as well, and it was also a co-ed group. So when I first saw it, I thought that it was mainly a women's group, but that's fine. I didn't really care. And so I had um, updated my little Facebook picture. It was just a nerdy, it was not a cute picture whatsoever. It was literally just a picture of myself when I was at this finance luncheon. So it was just me like in my little dorky work outfit, just smiling, like no filter or anything, just regular. So anyway, um, one of the rules for the Facebook group was you have to introduce yourself so I introduced myself. I was like, hey, you know, I just moved to the area. Um, it's going to be fun, like working with you guys and stuff. I'm really excited to see what kinds of like volunteer projects we have coming up and the events and stuff. So I noticed that once I posted in the Facebook group, a lot of people were commenting on my on my little post, like a lot of guys, a lot of the black guys. Um, they were commenting on my little post like, oh, hey, oh, it's so nice to meet you. Like looking forward to seeing you. Oh, wow. Like you work in the finance field. Oh, so, so do I. I also work in the accounting field. And literally leaving like these paragraph ass responses. And I remember um, there were some other girls in the group as well, like unambiguous women, whatever. And they were also commenting. And I noticed that they would reply to the men, but then they like wouldn't reply to me. Um, and so I, I didn't think anything of it, but it, looking back, it seemed like some of those women, maybe they wanted those men's attention. And so I will say, actually, um, to be 100% honest, this is my dark feminine side coming out. I specifically did choose this particular nonprofit because I did see that a lot of the wealthier professionals um, in my city were a part of this little social group thing. And so one of my social climbing goals was to make friends that are wealthy or to socialize in spaces where I'm not going to be around as much like trashiness basically. So I knew that there were a lot of high earning women there as well as high earning men there. So the way that I was seeing it was I'm just here to make friends or whatever and basically whatever happens happens. And I knew that there would be potentially attractive like guys there. You guys know my type. My type is an MLS man with my exact uh, features and mix. And I actually did end up meeting my boyfriend there. So I achieved my goal. I also ended up making friends. But before all that happened, 
I joined this group and I noticed that some of the girls were immediately being rude to me, like from the moment I joined the group. So I remember I would ask questions like, oh, hey, you know, where do I find this or where do I find the sign up or like, how do I get to that place? What's the place called that we're meeting at? Because I was new to the city, so I didn't really know anything or like where all the separate buildings were that we were going to and stuff. Because this was one of those types of nonprofits where it's like an umbrella organization. So they did lots of collaborations with other groups around the city. And it wasn't just based on like blackness or anything. They would do all kinds of like volunteer stuff at food banks or uh, maybe they would run a 5K. Maybe they would volunteer at like a 5K. You know, the people that hand out water and stuff. Or they would like um, go and talk at schools. I remember I actually did a presentation at a high school. I did a presentation uh, recently at an African-American high school to help to encourage the kids to like be an accountant. So that was back before I started being full-time on YouTube. So they had all kinds of things going on. So I would ask questions and I noticed that some of the girls, there was this one unambiguous girl in particular who would make these snippy ass remarks. And for example, I remember there was one time when uh, we were all talking about volunteering for this little uh, 5K thing, like at an elementary school. And I was like, yeah, um, I'm excited to go. Like, I've never been to one of these types of events before. And then this bitch randomly responds and she's like, oh, well, when I go to events, I just go so I can help people, not so I can try to see what the event is like. And she just had this snippy ass response. But I was like, you know what? I'm probably reading into it because you know how like if somebody is texting you or something, you can kind of read into it or you think that the tone is way worse than it is. So I just didn't think anything of it. And I didn't really care because I was like, I am here to socialize. I am here to be in more of a wealthy space. And I want to make friends who are like well off financially because I want friends where we can go on trips together. We can go to brunch together. We can, you know, and then the same thing, like for those of you who are decentering men, the way that I viewed it was any guy who even wants to be in my presence needs to be a guy who like has money or he's high earning or he's, you know, got things going for himself if he's even going to be in my vicinity. Um, so I'm just being honest. That's exactly what I was thinking. And I think that people could pick up on that in the little Facebook group. But it's like, even if you can pick up on my social climbing, it was very obvious that everybody there was social climbing. I mean, the reason that people seek out different nonprofits and social clubs and gyms and you want to hang out in the nice part of town. Everybody knows that the reason you're doing those things is because you obviously want to socialize. So it's like, why is it okay for everybody else to socialize? But suddenly, if I want to socialize, then I'm wrong. Or like, then people have to call me out or they have to like be mean to me or basically haze me. So I noticed that from the moment I joined this little Facebook group, uh, mainly the unambiguous black guys, they would always tag me and try to like respond um, if I asked a question or just in general, they would just randomly tag me and start talking about stuff. I remember my DMs, you know, guys were suddenly adding me on Instagram and like going into my little messages, like sending me little messages or little DMs. Like I remember one time I got lost on my way to an event because it was at this really big park where they had multiple different parking lots and stuff. And I was like, oh, I think I'm in the wrong lot. And so this, I remember there was one guy who like stayed back. So he left the group so he could stay back and like wait for me. And I noticed that some of the women in the group, I feel like they might have noticed this or they might have felt as if I was somehow causing a commotion in the group. Because I remember when I went to one of the little meetings, some of the girls were, you know how they try to give dirty looks and shit. And I was just like, you guys, I'm fucking 32 years old. I don't have time for this high school shit. I didn't say that, but I was thinking it. Anyway, so I was just minding my business. And so I went to the very first meeting and my goal at that first little meetup volunteer thing was to try to make at least two friends. I was trying to make two new girlfriends to hang out with. So I remember I ended up meeting this one girl and I was like, oh, hey, like, are you new here? Like, do you live around here? Blah, blah, blah. So I ended up getting her number. So I made one friend and then I ended up walking up to this other girl and I was like, oh, hey, like, what's your name? Nice to meet you. And then with this particular girl, I noticed that as I was talking to her, she was kind of looking around to see what guys were in the vicinity, which is fine. I mean, I, I was just trying to make friends, but if she just would rather talk to guys, then that's fine. Another interesting fact about this girl is, so you know those women who post photos of themselves within Facebook groups? So she would post photos of herself 
but she would post pictures of like her in a bikini, her in like some booty shorts. And by the way, I'm not shaming her whatsoever. There is nothing wrong with if you want to look cute. But I noticed she would just randomly post these unsolicited photos and like nobody would like them or anything. Like none of the guys or anything would like them or like comment and say, oh, this is a cute picture. She would just post them in there and then they would just, there would be crickets. And then I noticed apparently whenever I would ask a question in the group, like, hey, does anyone know where the meetup location is for this thing? Then I would get all these different responses. Like guys would try to tag me and shit and like respond. Some guys would even give like almost like a duplicate response of the last guy. So it seemed like they were just maybe trying to interact with me. So I don't know if that could have come off as bad or if some people would have thought like, oh, she's trying to be cute and like get attention, which even if I am being cute and getting attention, what's wrong with me doing the exact same thing that other people do, which is social climbing. Anyway, so I was minding my own business. We were at the actual meetup and I was talking to this unambiguous girl and she noticed that some other guys were, I guess, looking at me or something. And I noticed that she would try to physically block me from being seen. It was, it was as if she was trying to block me from being seen by guys or something. So there was this one MLS guy. There was this one very handsome MLS guy that she knew. And she said hi to him. And, you know, she didn't introduce me to him or whatever. But that was not a big deal because my goal for that night was to make female friends. It wasn't it wasn't so I could like try to go in and talk to guys. Um, anybody who knows me knows that I don't walk up to men. I don't ever in my life, I've never like approached a guy or like walked up to a guy like, oh, hey, what's your name? Oh, can I get your number? No, I'm not that type of person at all. I just kind of mind my business. So I noticed that when the MLS guy came up, she didn't like introduce me or anything. So that was weird, but I didn't really care. So I just kept talking to her and then I noticed that as more people would come into the room, she would try to, again, almost block me from being seen by these guys. You know how people will try to directly stand in front of you in hopes that others can't see you? So you know, like, let's say there's a circle and you guys are all talking and then somebody stands in front of you so that you're excluded from the circle. She was doing that exact body language. And so I remember thinking to myself, okay, is she trying to block me like from, from guys or something? But I didn't say anything. So long story short, the same MLS guy, he actually ended up walking up and he like interrupted us and he actually introduced himself. So that whole little cock blocking thing that she was trying to do, like that didn't work. So it turns out that two of the guys who were like, I guess kind of the leaders within this nonprofit thing, um, they started being really nice to me. And I didn't know who these guys were. They were just two unambiguous black guys. Um, so I didn't really pay attention because you guys know my view on that. Um, so I didn't really pay attention or think anything of it. But I noticed that I asked this one unambiguous black girl a question because she looked like she was one of the leaders as well because she was kind of like setting up tables at the events and stuff. So I remember I walked up to her at one event and I asked her like, oh, do you know what time uh, you guys are going to be starting? And she was like, we're starting at 2 p.m. And I was just thinking, oh, okay. Because um, that was kind of a weird response. Like, why was she being mean to me? And I noticed this pattern where every time I would ask that girl a question, because this group, it was like a little bit disorganized sometimes. Um, but I noticed every time I asked this girl a question, she would be kind of like rude to me. I also noticed that she would uh, try to pretend like she didn't remember my name when she definitely did remember my name because I was very active in the Facebook group all the time. Um, and actually, I ended up making a lot of friends from this group because the people who were not jealous and the people who were just nice, I ended up vibing with them very well to the point where we all started hanging out and like going to these little happy hours, like outside of this little social club thing. We would hang out and so everybody follows each other on Instagram in this group. So people would see me all the time posted on other people's Instagram pages. You know how you take group photos where it's like somebody's birthday or something. So I was always interacting with everybody within this group as well as interacting in the Facebook group. So one day they decided to, I guess, get rid of like the inactive profiles within this Facebook group. Um, because they said that like some of the people had moved away and stuff and basically they just they needed to kind of clean it out and um, So guess who got cleaned out of the Facebook group? 
Yeah, yeah, I got cleaned out of the Facebook group. And it was so obvious that there was a conspiracy to specifically remove me out of the group because number one, some of the girls who were the leaders of the group, they did happen to be unambiguous. I am not trying to attack anyone. This is just what happened to me. Um, I never equated it to their phenotypes at all. This is actually before I had this YouTube channel and stuff. So I got kicked out of this Facebook group and I was so well liked within this social club thing that multiple people, about five or six people actually contacted the people who were the admins of the Facebook group. And they were like, hey, you messed up because you uh, you accidentally took out Exoticals United. Um, she's very, you know, she's always at all of our events and stuff. She volunteers all the time. She is like one of the main people that is there. And these people who were the admins of the group, I didn't know who the admins of the Facebook group were, but my friends that I had made, they were actually screenshotting me. They were doing the same thing you guys do here on YouTube. They were screenshotting and sending me all the tea. So it turns out that the admins of the group were the same girls that had been mean to me before, or the same girls that would do these sort of like cock blocking things. And then it also turns out that one of those girls that was mean to me, she was the girlfriend of one of the guys who kept on tagging me all the time. And like, I guess responding to me. So I don't know if she felt like her, her unambiguous boyfriend was like giving me attention or something. I had never paid attention because that's not my particular like type or whatever. And plus I was not, who goes into a freaking Facebook group trying to look for somebody to talk to like that. I mean, I'm just saying, like, that's not why I joined it. I wanted to join it so that I could successfully social climb and see what it was like within the group and kind of see if the culture of the group vibed well with me. So people were sending me screenshots and it turns out that some of these girls had actually been talking shit about me. And it also turns out that apparently some of these guys were actually very wealthy, just like I had suspected and owned multiple businesses. So some of the guys would own like restaurants or maybe they would own like a very small company or, you know, so it was a bigger deal than what I had thought. I mean, I don't pedestalize being a small business owner. Um, I come from a background, I come from more of a suburban type of background anyway. So I've, I've never pedestalized, oh my God, he owns a business or, oh my God, he owns a house. Like this is such a big deal. But from the screenshots that other people were sending me, there were some very thirsty women in there. I know that on YouTube, they would call some of these women mammies. That's, that's what they would call them. Um, so those are the women who are like, they really, really, really want like a, a black guy and they really care about impressing black guys and stuff. So it turns out they had been talking shit about me. And I was actually wrongfully kicked out of this Facebook group because these girls, according to the screenshots, they specifically did not want me to be a part of the group. One of the girls specifically wanted me to stop coming, like to stop coming to the meetups and shit um, because apparently I was just being too much of a distraction, I guess. I don't know. She never gave a reason, uh, but they just didn't like me from day one. Not only were there Facebook groups, but there were also some other groups that were being started in addition to the Facebook group. So there were like some group chats that were being started. You know how they have like the WhatsApp groups and stuff like that. So there were multiple WhatsApp groups that were being started. And so even though I got banned basically from this Facebook group, I was still being added into the smaller WhatsApp groups. And it turns out there was actually a girls group that was a spinoff group. Like there was a girls WhatsApp group chat and so I noticed that every, every other girl was in the WhatsApp group except me. And so my friends that I had made, they were like, oh yeah, we're having a girls night on this day, blah, blah, blah. Like, are you coming Exoticals United? And I was like, oh, I didn't know there was a girls night. And then they were like, oh yeah, you didn't see the flyer. And I'm like, wait, what flyer? And they would text me the flyer. And then I was like, oh no, I never got this. Like, where'd you guys get this from? And they were like, oh, it's, it's from the group. And I was like, oh, I'm not a part of this girls chat uh, WhatsApp group. And they were like, oh, there has to have been a mistake. Like, because every single girl who has been coming and volunteering and, you know, speaking at the schools and stuff, every single girl is a part of the WhatsApp group. Cause like, we're all sisters, blah, blah, blah. 
I had DM'd this girl. So the, the guy's girlfriend, yeah, she was in charge of the WhatsApp group. So as soon as my friend told me that the guy's girlfriend was in charge of the group, I was thinking, oh yeah, she didn't add me on purpose. But I still was like, you know what? I'm probably reaching. Let me not try to assume that she doesn't like me because everyone's not my enemy. So I, I really try hard not to have that mindset of, oh my God, they're jealous. They're just, yeah, fuck these bitches. They're all jealous. No, I really try not to just project that onto people. So I actually sent her a DM and I was like, oh, hey, can I be added to the um, to the girls chat or like, am I allowed to be in there or, you know, like so and so told me about it and she didn't respond to it. And so still I was like, you know what, maybe she didn't see my message. I don't know. Maybe she's just maybe she doesn't check her Instagram DMs. Usually people do check their DMs, but I don't know. Maybe she doesn't. And so it literally got to a point to where. I was not in this group chat and so and I kept coming to all of the events by the way and I was very well known within this little nonprofit thing and I was doing lots of the events like I said I was speaking at I spoke at a school or whatever I did all these different like little volunteer things so I remember I came up to her at an event and I was like oh hey aren't you the one who's in charge of the group and she's like oh yeah and I was like oh can I be added to the group and she was like oh yeah of course like you were supposed to be in there the whole time blah 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 and she played it off like I'm sorry but I, I don't believe that she wanted me to be in that group I think that she was hoping that I would like not message her about it so by the way I ended up getting added back into the girls group and I ended up getting added into the Facebook group. So I thought that the guy, like the black guy who kept on responding and like he was he was at all of the events, I thought that he was in charge of it. And so I actually had to message him and I was like, hey, did something happen on Facebook? And he was like, oh yeah, I'm so sorry. Like um, I'm not in charge of who was in the Facebook group. Um, so-and-so, the same girl, is the admin for that. And, you know, they were just basically trying to see like who was very active in the group and who was so basically her boyfriend like apologized and said hey yeah I'm sorry that you got kicked out of the group like you weren't supposed to be kicked out of the Facebook group and so I was thinking okay there's all this drama when all I'm doing is literally I came here to make friends and yes I did potentially come here to also be seen and to uh, network and you know if somebody wants to wine and dine me then so be it um, but seriously, I really did come there to just live my best life, social climb, and be in a setting with a lot of wealthy people of color. Um, my first priority, though, was always to make female friends. And so I was disappointed that I was instantly having women gunning for me from the moment that I walked in. But guess what? It didn't work because I still achieved my goal of making friends. So not only are my closest friends from that particular group, the guy where they tried to cock block, where she tried to block me from, from seeing him or whatever. Yeah, so I ended up dating that guy. He's actually my boyfriend now. But I'm not saying it in, in a flexing way because I am the type of person where I don't center my life around a guy. Um, I do believe that men can come and go, so you never know what could happen. Obviously, I hope for the best. But as soon as I joined that group, I could tell that some of those girls, they were hoping that they could kind of like exclude me and bully me out of that group because they knew that it was a social climbing space and by the way the types of women and men that were in this group so you know the black fraternities and sororities so some of those girls in that group they specifically would tell me they were like oh yeah I'm here so I can meet some of the alphas like you know the the alpha phi alpha or whatever I was thinking what the fuck like I'm, I'm fucking 32 years old we are not in college like what is this but in the unambiguous community, you know, some people, I guess they view that as like being cute or like being a big deal. Um, I went to an HBCU and I still to this day don't even see it as anything that's a big deal. But I remember hearing some of the women saying things like, oh, yeah, um, we're they're having this barbecue. You know, they're they're having this cookout like this fraternity, because like I said, this nonprofit, it was kind of an umbrella nonprofit to where it connects you to all of these other different organizations that do stuff within the community. So some of those organizations were like the black fraternities and black sororities. Um, and another thing that I found interesting was the unambiguous woman who really hated me, she was actually an AKA. So AKAs are the ones that they associate with the light skinned women, you know, the bougie. Those are the ones who begged me to be in that. They really wanted me to be in their sorority. I don't know if I shared that story on here. Maybe I will share the story of how 
they really tried to get me to be in that and how I didn't end up doing it because I just don't, I don't really, I don't work well with random organizations that like they try to haze people and shit. So I didn't really know what it was either. Um, but yeah, so I, I found it interesting that an unambiguous mono dark skinned black woman who was very proud to be in a sorority that is associated with quote unquote light skinned pretty girls was being so mean to an actual light skinned pretty girl. I thought that was very interesting. But yeah, so that's the story of how I got kicked out of the group. I actually, I did end up getting added back into the Facebook group because once I kind of exposed it in a nice way, um, then they had to, you know, she had to add me back because if she wouldn't have added me to the groups, it would have been obvious that she was a hater because I'm always nice to people in real life. Um, sometimes on YouTube, I'm kind of trolly and I can probably sound bitchy, but in real life, I'm very chill and I like to just laugh and have fun. So if they wouldn't have let me be in the groups, it would have been completely obvious, especially because I hang out with so many people in the group and I get along with so many people. Like there would have been no reason for me to be excluded. But anyway, I'm talking about this topic because social climbing is something that every person wants to do deep down inside. Um, this is the reason why people have YouTube channels, is the reason why people have nice cars and houses, it's the reason why people want a better job or a better body. It's because people want to have a positive experience in this world. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to have friends and, you know, positive, healthy family relationships, or, you know, you want to be well known in your community. Like that was my goal with this whole thing. I wanted to number one, help my community, but I also did want to make friends and kind of establish myself. Like it was really fun speaking in front of all those high school kids and stuff and like encouraging young MLS girls to go into accounting. But I, I really learned from that situation that there are a lot of women out here. And I was actually surprised there were a lot of unambiguous women out here who were very into the whole social climbing scene. And I was also surprised at kind of how vicious and catty some of these same women were. By the way, not all of them were unambiguous. Some of them were MLS women. Some of them were non-black women. Um, but the ones who did the whole conspiracy thing where it's like, you don't even want me to be in the group. Yeah, unfortunately, um, that those women did happen to be unambiguous. But anybody who tells you, hey, you shouldn't go to this event or you shouldn't try to make friends or you shouldn't try to socialize in these wealthy spaces, they're just saying that because they want to hold you back they don't want you to have a social life. They want you to just go to work and come home and that's it. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to purposely be in spaces where there would be wealthy people. So all you have to do is if you go on Google and you look up um, hobbies for wealthy people, some of the things that you can try are like you can do golfing, you can do um, like rowing. They have groups where you can run 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons, marathons. All of those things cost money to register for. Um, you can look up like different galas or you know how they have people that they take care of the parks and stuff like they have the people that care about the historical landmarks, all of those types of organizations. Those are the types of clubs and stuff where people use them for social climbing purposes. And that's exactly what I did. And I succeeded because I made friends who were leveled up non jealous friends, because I knew that for me, if I wanted to have positive friendships, they have to be women who already have their own stuff going for themselves. And so that was how I made friends with the some of the unambiguous women that I know that are non jealous, they're normal. And they are their fitness influencers, or they have master's degrees, and they're, you know, they're doing their own thing. And so they don't have, they're not focused on me, basically. Um, but I've noticed that some people literally get triggered when they see a woman who they perceive as already being more privileged and then they get mad because they feel like, dang it, this was supposed to be my one secret for social climbing where, where I could beat other people at it and where I could like have my own secret way of like kind of leveling up and interacting with all these business owners because I was also surprised though at the limited number of MLS women that were socializing in those spaces. I mainly saw like, unambiguous mono black men and women. I also saw um, some East Indian people as well as like Latin American and white people. I didn't really see a lot of MLS women. So I think that was also a part of the reason why I really stood out. And that's another thing. Whenever somebody says, oh, everybody looks like Beyonce, everybody looks like Rihanna, that's false. 
because out of all the quote unquote black people, anytime I've gone to a space where there have been majority black people, obviously I stand out. Like it's very obvious. I would say they're like 85% look like how Normani looks or like how Francesca Rivers looks. So obviously I stood out. Um, but I noticed that it worked in my favor. Anyway, so that's the story time of how I got kicked out of the Facebook group. But I'm also talking about this because I feel like the reason that some of the girls didn't want me to be in the group was because they didn't like that I was coming in already having a quote unquote advantage in their eyes. Or at least that's how I felt because it's like, why else would you automatically dislike someone without knowing them? Like, why would you not like them? So either either you're racist against me because I am multiracial or you simply don't like light-skinned people. Those are the only two reasons. I did not flirt with anybody's boyfriend. I did not post any pictures of myself to try to like draw attention to myself. I have never walked up to any guy whatsoever in any of the events because I already know that if I talk to a guy or something, people are automatically going to assume that I'm flirting or that I'm sleeping with the guy. So I had never done anything wrong to any of these women whatsoever. They simply did not like me from the beginning. So I mean, what's the reason? There are only two reasons. Either you hate mixed people or you hate light-skinned women. Or you possibly perceive me as being a quote-unquote threat because maybe you notice how the black guys are reacting and you take it as they like me or something, even though I didn't really take it as that. I did find it weird though. They kept tagging me and stuff and I was like, why are they trying to like get my attention? Oh, and another thing that I forgot to mention. So I did a lot of volunteering with this particular group um, I worked with them consistently for over a year and every year they actually have a gala. So you know how, well, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you are a part of a lot of nonprofits or you like to social climb, you like to be in these higher end spaces, usually at nonprofits and these different organizations, they might have like an auction or they may have a gala or some sort of celebration like, hey, this is everything that our nonprofit did this year. So usually if you do a lot of volunteering, they have different awards that you can win. Like, oh, you know, you got volunteer of the year or you're running our marketing department for us. You did a really good job at this. So I noticed that even though I was one of the most active members within the group, I did not get nominated for any awards whatsoever. Like my name wasn't even mentioned. And then I found out who was in charge of doing this whole entire thing. It was the same exact girl who had kicked me out of the group. Same girl who was mean to me. Same girl who was mean when she was like setting up the tables and stuff. So I could tell that she kind of, maybe she felt like she didn't want anybody else coming in or she just wanted to have power or like be in charge or whatever. I mean, thankfully I don't really care about getting awards because that's not the reason why I joined that. But I definitely noticed that that was a thing. And another thing I noticed about that same girl was after she realized that her tactics did not work and that I would not stop coming to all of these events, then she suddenly tried to flip it around and be super nice to me. And I could tell that she was only being nice to me because she was scared that I would like flirt with her boyfriend or something. I'm sorry, but that's the only reason that I can think of that she would suddenly become nice to me because I noticed that her boyfriend, he would still talk to me, not in a weird way or anything, because like I said, I'm not even like that. So, but he would still always say hi or like try to be nice or whatever. And she noticed that her boyfriend was not going to stop saying hi to me. And she also noticed that I was not going to stop coming to the events. And I became friends with everybody else within the little club thingy because she was the only one who was like mean to me basically. But everybody else was nice. And so she knew that she wasn't going to get rid of me. So I noticed that once everybody else was really nice to me, then suddenly she wants to turn around and act like we're nice and like BFFs. And I was thinking, wow, that's very fake. So basically you thought you could haze me and bully me out of here. And then when you realize you can't, now suddenly you want to be my BFF. I've noticed this pattern a lot. Anyway, what do you ladies think? Have you ever tried to social climb somewhere and maybe somebody was mean to you, but then when they realized it's not going to work, then suddenly they try to flip it and be nice to you. But you know, deep down inside, they're doing that thing where it's like, Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. What do you ladies think? Let me know in the comments section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.